All right, guys, as we jump into today's session, you'll notice um, before I even load in that I look a little bit different and my level is quite a bit higher. You'll see up there level 25. Um, so what I've done, I am up to, yeah, right around 19 hours of playtime. So a fair bit longer than the last video we did. Uh, but I was focusing mainly on uh, going through and doing a small handful of story related things that I did not want to put on the channel since the game is brand new for spoiler purposes, but mainly focused on just exploration and uh, grabbing side quests and banging those out for XP. So today there's a, a few kind of key things that I've learned that I wanted to go over with you that I think will be helpful and uh, then we'll see after kind of these tutorial areas um, that I wanted to point out uh, where our path leads us. But we left off in the rumor requirement and you'll see that right now it looks quite a bit different. Um, that's because I have done some side quests. I have, you know, found more gear from those. I've traded them in, got the money, and purchased the items that I need to get uh, additional pieces of equipment and upgrades in here. So this first big thing in the middle, you see uh, fertilizer. Um, that is a thing you can craft if you purchase the ability to you know, conjure this in the room of requirement. Um, I will show you on Hogsmeade where you can buy these items. So let me first drill into the Hogsmeade map. Uh, right over, where is it? Uh, at the Magic Neep, this guy sells seeds and fertilizer. That's where you can buy the seeds that you need to put plants in the pots. The second place, uh, which is where you actually unlock the different tiers of the equipment for potion brewing and plant, pl uh, uh, plant potting. And also that fertilizer generator is from the Tomes and Scrolls in Hogsmeade. So down here, the specialty bookshop, uh, Tomes and Scrolls, that's where you get the actual items that you're going to conjure in the room and requirement. Over here at the Magic Neep is where you get seeds. And then this actually I didn't discover until yesterday. Scroll a little further north. You'll see there's another shop over here, Dogweed and Deathcap. This also sells seeds, but it's also where you can purchase uh, the um, fighting plants, as it were. So your mandrakes, your Chinese chomping cabbages, and your venomous tentaculas. You can pick those up here as well as the related seeds for them. So if you were confused, oh, oh boy, I need to do these for these side quests. Yes, I know it's a little tricky because for whatever reason, um, they made the map spawn to where that shop is kind of hidden behind the world map banner up top. So just scroll a little further up the dogweed and death cap. These are the three places that are directly related to the things you're going to be doing in the room of requirement uh, right here. Tomes and Scrolls, that's for the equipment for crafting potions and growing plants. Magic Neep has one set of seeds, and then Dogweed and Deathcap has another set of seeds. So those three stores are all related to the Room of Requirement. So I have purchased up higher spec versions of uh, the same items I had before. Um, I have a small potting table over here to keep a non-stop supply of Dittany leaves for making Wigan Weld healing potions. You'll see I'm sitting at 25 on my person right now uh, on the very bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It's that green file. Um, 25 is the cap. Don't know if that can be increased, but I've got the max amount, so I don't really need it now. Uh, Venomous Tentacula, I have one of these growing up my tool wheel slots are full, so I can't mess with that. Uh, Chinese chopping cabbages, I can grab some more. And then as I'm planting these, it says that I can add fertilizer because I have that fertilizer generator in the middle. You'll notice that if I say A, fertilize, it will bump the yield up plus one. So having a bag of fertilizer that's actually quite expensive to buy from the shops itself, Yes, making this fertilizer generator is a little bit more expensive, but it pays for itself, I think, after three bags. So every four minutes, I believe, is the timer, maybe three, three, four minutes, um, it will generate a new bag. You just grab it, and any plant that's growing, you can fertilize it any point along the path. So that's what I have growing right now. I have Dittany leaves, 
chomping cabbages and venomous tentacula growing in my potted plants. That is a small over here. Um, this I believe is a medium and this is a large. And then I've just got my still singular brewing potion where I had most, mostly been focusing on Wick and Mold potions, but I'm full right now, so I'm not in need of brewing any potions. And of course, we saw this gear identification table yesterday. I do have some question mark gear. So you can see I just learned some two new ones that are higher spec. So that is the room of requirement area. Um, that's how you get the parts that you need to be able to do all of your crafting inside of the room of requirement. The next thing that I wanted to show you is actually, uh, excuse me, let me hit start instead of back because I don't want to see the map, related to the talents section. I didn't catch this when they first popped open, but it will tell you how many points you have up here. Once you hit level 15 and you can first start applying your talent points, you're going to have a bunch of them. So pay mind, I think I was running around for a couple of hours with like 10 points on me ready to upgrade stuff I didn't catch the first time. Uh, and then it will give you one plus each level that you level up so yeah that is the talent points and you just pick through scroll through you can pick any item to spend any of those points on that by the way maybe i didn't make that clear uh all of these subsections you just hover hover over click a you hover over these things you haven't learned yet and it'll tell you exactly what it does some of them are level locked you have to be able to cast this before you can do that so if i wanted this i have to unlock that first same thing over here. You, you have to be able to cast this before. I don't have that spell learned. I think um, it'll be tied to story, but I've actively been avoiding doing main story quests uh, to save until we jump back in. So those are the two main kind of things that I've discovered I wanted to point out. Um, I will also show you a completion of one of the puzzle types of the Merlin trials that I've caught is kind of a repeating theme. Um, there's a ton of them and they're all, uh, you know, their own thing that you have to do, but there are repeats in the mechanic. Um, so I don't want spoilers in the game, but since this one I've seen pop up two, three, four times in different places, I'll have to find it again where the specific one that I left is. Uh, but I will show you exactly how to do at least this one specific type just from start to finish so you can see the actual process. And the reason I'm picking this specific one is one of the ones that I did um, at different point yesterday while I was doing side quests and leveling uh, was actually bugged. So having a, having an idea of what it looks like in case you run into the same one that I did that is bugged, um, you won't feel like you're banging your head against the wall. It's not your fault. And there is a way to break the bug. Uh, all you have to do is travel away from the area, fast travel, and then come back and it will reset itself. I'm going to show you something else that is related to the broom flying that I didn't catch yesterday looks like uh, I actually here. Let me just get rid of this guy real quick. Uh, my point is over there. So 125 away. It's across this big chasm. Do I really want to be hassled with running all the way across there by foot? No, of course I don't. So after you learn how to fly in your broom, how do you actually pull up the broom? It's part of the equipment wheel. So you hold down left bumper the same way we would equip and use a potion. Uh, or to throw a plant in a battle, it's uh, on the same wheel and it's off to the right. So while you're holding the left bumper on the Xbox, you'll see uh, B over there, the rightmost icon that is summon broom. So just tap B and you'll immediately be on it in the same controls as always. Right trigger, basic flight, left trigger will give you extra speed. So now I actually I want to unlock this flu so we'll just come back down to earth and dismount. But that's how you can cast your broom. It is worth noting that you cannot cast your broom while you're inside Hogsmeade Village grounds. Uh, and it'll tell you and there are also block off areas as you're exploring the map. Um, edges that you don't have unlocked yet but other than that the broom makes life way handier and that's the fastest and most efficient way to unlock all of these flu network fast travel points just fly around on your broom land tag them get back on wash rinse repeat 
Now, the last thing that I did want to show you before we cut for the day was I was going to show you one of the uh, Merlin challenges um, that is kind of a recurring Merlin trial. Okay, guys, so I found the one I was looking for. This is one I have not completed um, because I think I was lacking all the spells that I needed. Uh, but this is the one and only Merlin trial I'm going to show you until I show the all collectibles in the game and Merlin trial puzzle solved. So right here is our Merlin Deus. I've already put the Malice Sweet on. So what you're going to see is these, and there's going to be three of them scattered about the area. What this is, is you are looking for cannonballs. Cannonballs are what you need um, in order to fill those round holes. So they look like piles of these on the ground. So first I'm going to do a quick uh, little spell adjustment. We need Accio. And I'm showing you this one specifically because it's glitched. And you'll notice this is important. There's four circular holes there. But there are five can of balls. Count them with me. One, two, three, four, five. You have to grab all five. The fifth ball sits in the middle on top. So what you want to do is pull them with Accio and then slowly move with them. Make sure they stay in that yellow beam. Um, it does have a tendency to be a little bit glitchy. Once you get kind of sort of close to it, the spell will stop and then we'll all roll into place. Four plus the top one in the middle. So that is one of them on this specific quest. There's another set there, which means there's another set of cannonballs right over here by this furnace. One, two, three, four, five. So cast to be slow. Sorry, not Lumos. Make sure they all pull. Yep. Got them all rolling with me. One, two, three, four, five. And then the last one on this specific challenge is outside the gate over here around to the left. Okay, guys. And yeah, for this last set of balls, the ones outside the gate, this is the one that if people are struggling and probably missing um, how to do it, it's actually really, really close. Like I said, they spawn these really close to the pad because you can't Accio them that far. You'll need some kind of incendiary spell. Underneath this rock, you can see them now. They're showing up white. I just used my Confringo spell. Uh, if you don't have Confringo yet unlocked, of course, you can use Incendio. But burn the vine, then the balls will appear. So now I need to Accio these balls. Let me see if they're all pulling. I've got one, two... Three, four, five, perfect. So now we just pull Accio, lock it up, and these spells can be a bit wonky. You'll see right there, Accio broke. So I'm gonna quickly cast it again. One, two, three, four, five. Just be slow and deliberate about it, and that'll pull it. And that's the third Merlin trial complete. And then it shows you that little thing. So the first time you learn a Merlin trial, you'll see that. Then there's like a green quick ghost of Merlin. I just wanted to show you the cannonball ones because they can be a little glitchy. And if you're lost, just remember, like I showed you on this one outside, I'm sure a lot of people are missing this one. And it's so close. You just have to think outside the box. There are quite a few Merlin trials where things that you need to find or interact with are hidden behind vines that you have to burn. So just be really aware of the environment. All of the solutions are within a reasonable proximity to the trial itself. So if you're having to fly off, you know, the equivalent of a quarter or half a mile away, give or take, you're probably going too far and missing something obvious. But that's it. That's the only Merlin trial solution I'm going to show you. One, because these can be glitchy because I've already done a few. And two, uh, knowing exactly how to make your spell work to get them completed um, is a bit of a challenge. The little ball puzzles can be a little wonky. So guys, that's going to do it for today. Um, hopefully you learned some new tips and tricks. 
and uh, just a few little house cleaning items and we did one main quest so uh, another day another good bit of progress we will pick up where we left off today on the next one I am in the background just going to be level upgrading focus focusing but avoiding kind of main paths and again I'm not going to give spoilers but we will eventually do a full walkthrough on everything when I do another playthrough down another house so guys I appreciate you checking in we will catch you on the next one